Whatever we says are good. A good devoir. There's a possible that we say, Sena Arena Benoist Sioin by Melech Shloimoi, Vatora She Itloi Imoi, the Yoim Hasu Nosoi, the Yoim Simchas Liboi. So we know that in Shira Shirim, when it refers to the Melech Shloimoi, it refers to the Boynishloi, the Melech Shasholim Shaloi. So the Shaila is. Um, well, all right, I'm glad you're letting us know what we're looking at. We have a Zoom now. Hi, it's cool. Let me hear something. How is Jacko doing? We're so, so. He's still not doing So, what are they doing? How do we how do we mute this? Oh, okay, fine. So much. The Shaila is. How do we understand? That we refer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu as the Melech Shloima, and we say, "Go out and see the Atora Sheitrulai Imoy." Who is Imoy Klal Yisro? How do we relate the idea that Klal Yisro is referred to as Imoy Shel Hakadosh Baruch Hu? What is the pshat? We look at Klal Yisro as Imoy. Why would we use such a terminology? as our relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We generally look at ourselves as children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as, as uh, members of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's flock. But Imoy, that would tend to be a very interesting way of shtoling tzu, our shayyachus to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I once heard of it that the idea is the following. Sometimes we find that Parents call their children mamalo. What is the pshat? Where does that come from? So there is a time in life when your children are children and they're kinderlach and then they grow up. And then there's a time when the growth of the children reaches a point where you have a certain type of nachas. There are children, they have nachas from their, the parents give, give nachas from their children. They say something cute when they're little, they start to smile. The Bobby and Zadie he say, this is the cutest ankle they ever had. And they go to school and maybe they ask their first kasha and they do something special and they got a good mark. And we all have various types of nachas from our children. There comes a point, I remember this very clearly in my life, when your children take the role of the parents. Remember, we once went on a family trip. And generally speaking, you go on a trip, uh, it's not a big vacation for the parents, it's more of a, a 
burden. You take the kids on a trip and you have to worry about preparing enough food for every single meal. And this kid wants to do this and that kid wants to do that. And, you know, it's not always the greatest vacation. We once went on a trip and we, we stopped at a certain space. I remember when my children said, Tati, you sit down, mommy, you sit down. And they brought us lunch. That was a certain nachos that my children had achieved the level where I could call them mamala. You're taking care of us. The Rabbi looks at his children. And there's a point when every one of us become Takodesh Borchu the Mamala. The day of Hakomis Amishkan was the day that Hakodesh Borchu could look at us and say, Mamala, you're doing my job. You're taking care of my kinderlach. Mizeh Ranpin in the miniature Eifin, we're trying to build a Mishkan over here, we're trying to build a miniature Beis Amikdash. Mokim, where Torah can grow, where children can steig, can Torah can blossom in a, in a beautiful setting. We're trying to build the Shtikola Mishkan. And we're asking every parent to become that mama that takes that achrayas, that takes that responsibility to say, this is our achrayas and we want to be part of it. We want to make it happen. We want to see to it that Torah can grow and blossom. We want to do it for the Rabbi Nishalaylam. We want to do it for Klal Yisrael. We want to do it for our children. So this is an opportunity. The next couple of days can be very, very special. Everybody has a friend, a neighbor, an acquaintance. Someone maybe owes you a Torah. And everybody can be that mamala that can make this happen. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu will say, take a look, my kindle. Let's make a crown for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Let's make that Atorah and raise the crown. It'll be a crown for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a crown for our children, and a crown for every one of you. Who's mishtatif in this tremendous mitzvah. I'd like to ask Rabbi Avram, to share a few words as well. Thank you everyone for coming at, at this time of night. So I could uh, just talk about the, the Mishkan that we hope to build, just the practicality of what the yeshiva's vision in over the next year. You know, so Bezrat Hashem, we're hoping as soon as this man ends, and we have a Mirza Shem a successful campaign. We hope to really put a lot of energy on the first floor, you know, renovating the library, the, the, the lobby, the base medrash, and really making a beautiful Mokim Tayru. We hope to change the floor, the ceilings, the walls, the beautiful Arnakaidish, Svarm Shranks, new doors. We're hoping to make such a beautiful place that Bochum could learn, should be light, lit up well, and then Bezrat Hashem, to be a lichtige mishkon for many, many, many years ahead. So we're doing this, Mertz Hashem, for a mokim tayro, for dayrois, Mertz Hashem, the should come prior, but uh, it, it should be a mokim that <coughs> should be comfortable, should be gishmak, should be light. And uh, we're asking everyone to mishtatif, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity you know, uh, the, the, the purchase of the property was in the, in the peak of COVID, so we weren't able to really turn to the Tzibur at large. So this is really, a, you know, a, a chance that someone wants to partner with making an aliyah of a mokim that was a monastery, it was a church, and we're turning it to Dvarm Shabik Dusha. So, <clears throat> you know, Baruch Hashem, over the last three, four years, we haven't made a, a request to the Tzibur at large, so uh, the, the parents is the ambassadors. They know Baruch Hashem, our success. They know what we're all about. And they could, uh, you know, explain to the Chaverim, explain to your neighbors, explain to your family that uh, this opportunity, what this opportunity would lend to. So uh, we're asking everyone the next few days, you know, we're going live on tomorrow at 10 a.m. until Emirates Hashem, the Grand Siem on Tuesday, that that will be the time to, to ask people, we're going to have a call center throughout the days, and um, we'll have some videos and some 
some different um, pictures that everyone could share through the, the WhatsApp, through email, uh, through phone call. But we're asking everyone to do their chilek, to do, to do their part, and Mertz Hashem will have the necessary funds. And there'll be a tremendous simcha, a shtatfus from every single mishpacha. It will be incredible. And together, Mertz Hashem will be able to build this beautiful mishkan ma'at. And with that, Mertz Hashem, with the koyach of Limon that will be done there, Mertz Hashem will be able to come to Mashiach Tzidkenu, Meher I'm going to ask Keith over here, who is our leading the entire campaign. He's going to be in yeshiva in the next few days. And we always available for anyone with any questions, but you're going to hear him and he'll explain to you some of the details. Thank you everyone for joining us. I'm excited to be with you here tonight. And uh, um, Mr. Shem, we're gonna be very successful all working together. It's been a lot of work um, going into this point, raising um, all the money for the matching. And uh, I mean, both uh, Rabbi Feldheim Sr. and Jr. have done an incredible job really preparing all the marketing, everything, you know, we need uh, the money to be to be successful. And now it's, it's really our point, it's our part to, to join together to really knock it home. So, you know, the essence of our crowdfunding campaign is, is that first word, the crowd, right? Getting lots and lots and lots of small donations together to hit our goal. And that's gonna come from all of the people working together in order to make that happen. So if, for each one of us, whether we can raise $100, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, depending upon you know, what our abilities are, it, it, every single thing is gonna add up and it's all gonna feed into that matching. And the bigger you know, of a crowd that we have people who are raising money, the more people we'll have that'll eventually donate. And really, the most important factor of that is the fact that, you know, people give to people, not causes, right? Every one of us has a network of people. I tell people, think about your, you know, if you made a wedding or if you made a bar mitzvah, you know, everyone here, you, you have a, a child, um, you know, in the yeshiva, which means that you might made a bar mitzvah somewhere in the last few years. So if you look at your bar mitzvah invitation list, who are you close enough with to invite to your bar mitzvah? Right? And you can ask each one of those people for $18, $36, $50, $1,000, $1, depending upon their means. So most of us, we, I mean, we all get hit up all the time. Every one of us sees on WhatsApp or we're getting emails or we're getting phone calls to give to certain organizations, but we're usually not the ones who are doing that our, ourselves. And we know when people ask us for money, right? We don't get upset. People are not asking for themselves, they're asking for a good cause. So in the same way, we have to remember that when we ask our friends and family and our colleagues and our, our um, you know, any working professionals we work with or, or any, anyone, you know, from Shul, you know, anyone who, who would be on that Semcha list, that they're not gonna get upset with us for asking and that the money's going to a good cause. Um, what I try to tell people to focus on, so number one is, Think about, you know, what's the approach, right? How, how are we going to ask? So the way we ask is by going and essentially think about this. If you, if you eat at an amazing restaurant or you hear an amazing speaker, right? The first thing you want to do is turn around and tell your friends, oh, you have to try the steak at Serengeti, right? Or, or wherever you are, you go on vacation, you have to go to this place. People want to talk and share about their experiences. It's an innate human reaction. So rather than coming and saying, you know, can you please help me? Or, you know, can you do me a favor? Like, you don't want to be a schnorrer. No, it doesn't feel good to be a taker, but it feels good to be a giver. So when you tell somebody about an experience, when you tell someone about an opportunity, that's you being a giver. So that's the approach that we want to take is to tell people you have an amazing opportunity to be a sponsor of a mezuzah. You have the amazing opportunity to build an institution in town. You get to be the hero. I'm just telling you about this experience, but you get to do everything. You get to do something special. You get to have a halig in that. And that approach, it, it is a game changer when telling people about a campaign, is giving them an opportunity. People have mics to give. They want to give and they want to know that their maestro is going to something meaningful. They want to know that the maestro is going to something valuable. They want to know the money is not going to be wasted. And when a friend tells them about a trusted, a trusted friend tells them about an opportunity, they know that their maestro is going to something good and they get an extra little gishmak that they uh, get to support that friend at the same time. 
So it's up to us. If we don't do the asking, if we don't give them that opportunity, the money is not going to come. But every one of us can go and do that. So some of you, so what are the ways that we can do that? So number one, um, if you have not already, we're encouraging everybody to take on a page. So very easy. Um, we have this page here. You should be able to see my screen. Raisethecrown.com goes right here. We have the video. We have all sorts of information about the page. We have a whole about section. We have tons of preset donation opportunities. Um, and then on top of that, we have all these teams. You can see we've already signed up 22 teams. Many of them have already hit their goal. Look at uh, Hanzo, he's already, already well above his goal. And all it takes to set up a page, it's the easiest thing in the world. You go to raisethecrown.com, click on this big red button, join the team. You put in your information. You can put in your team name. So if I'm putting in Team Keith, see right here on the bottom, raisethecrown.com slash fun teams Keith. I can copy my link, send it to my friends and family, boom, done. You put your goal in as whatever you want. You want to put in $1,000, then the goal will be without matching. So if you want to raise $1,000, put in $4,000 and you'll have a page, you're ready to go, you know, we can start fundraising right away, send your link out to friends, family, everyone in your simcha list. And, you know, you want to lower your goal, let us know what you can lower your goal. You want to raise your goal, which many of you, you know, will find very quickly how easy it is to fundraise once you start putting yourself out there, you'll, you can raise the goal. And we're going to have prizes. I'm going to have a, we'll have a WhatsApp group, which uh, we can add everybody to, where we'll send out information. You can share what works, what doesn't work, support each other. We'll be calling out people for success. We'll be making a uh, little like prizes throughout the day for gift cards and things like that. Um, we're going to be having an in-person call center. There'll be food, there'll be support there. We'll have a list you can call if you run into people from calling from your own list. We're happy, you know, if, if you can give an hour, two hours of your time, we're going to be open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow, and then 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Monday and Tuesday nights. You can just show up. We'd love to have you, and we are there to support you, and we really appreciate what everybody is doing. So I just want to open the floor up to some questions uh, to give you a few a few a chance if anyone has any specific questions um, uh, if anything I didn't address and thank you so much for everyone for joining us no questions if you're having trouble unmuting just just let me know and I can uh, I can try to unmute you When do we, what do we say? The match, so the Rod the family they asked, what do we say the match is? Um, so the match is, it's a four times match, meaning if you give a dollar, we get uh, $4. If you give $100, we get $400. If you give $1,000, we get $4,000. So every dollar you give is matched by three other people, making it your gift worth four times as much as it normally would. Um, any other questions? There's someone on the other side one. Do you have a question? Oh, no. I was just going to comment. Um, my son asked me, instead of our making our own page, um, if we could just roll everything into his class page because the classes are having a, a obviously a competition and incentive. So that's something that I was, uh, you know, not, not to suggest other parents do it that way. It'll take away from his class unless they're all 11th grade parents. Um, but that was something that I was planning on doing. So I, I would say there's definitely um, one way to do it. I'm, I'm not going to tell you not to. Um, if you think that'll be compelling, obviously for the competition, I understand why that would be um, an incentive uh, to do it that way. But I would also recommend maybe for certain people, if you think um, they would be more likely to donate if they see your name um, on the page. That's really, um, the, the, really, there's two factors to it. Number one is, is that when they see, oh, it's, it's you know, Rabbi Sadwin's page, they want to be, you know, mechobed you with uh, their donation, so they're going to be more likely to donate rather than seeing, oh, it's going to some 11, 11th grade page or a general donation page. Um, that's number one. Number two is that 
um, having a goal is obviously also very helpful. So when you have a certain idea of, okay, I want to raise, you know, X dollars, um, having that personal page and having that name and, you know, uh, the friendly competition of like wanting to hit the goal. And it's just, it's just a helpful thing. Um, any other questions? We're going to have a WhatsApp group. If anyone wants to message me privately, you're welcome to message me privately. Um, and I'm, I'm here to support you. We're all here to support you. We really, really appreciate everyone taking time out, Mozi Chavez, to be part of the call and, and taking time to, to help the campaign over the next couple of days. We really, uh, I, in all sincerity, we cannot do it without you. Um, so we had a question, why don't grades just get credit for the teams that made it for their parents? So uh, definitely a possibility we can ask, um, we, we could do that and just, just factor that in after the fact, if, uh, if that's a you know a concern. Part of the really part of the team prizes is that it's meant to encourage the Bachram to be involved in a real way and, and really that they should be in, involved. You know, we have a huge list of people in the community to call and we, we're renting uh, you know phones for them and we're gonna give them the opportunity to to really, you know, work hard. So I don't, you know, I hear I hear the question, um, but you know, obviously, it's it's, it's somewhat semantics. But Hashem, all the money going in is going to go support the support the yeshiva. Um, so great. Um, thank you everyone for joining us, and uh, we uh, we really appreciate it. Have a great night. Good luck.